Good morning, dear students. Today we are going to solve May June 2015 one two paper. It's a MCQ paper, and the syllabus we are studying is Physics 5054. My name is Farhan Mazhar, and let's start today's paper. <clears throat> okay, on your screen, the question number one: Which quantity is a scalar quantity? Acceleration is a vector quantity. Force is a vector quantity. Temperature is a scalar quantity. Velocity is a vector quantity. So the C is a scalar quantity. So for question number one, C is the option. For question number one, C is the option. Okay, on your screen we have question number two, and it says. Uh, the diameter and the length of a thin wire approximately 50 centimeter in length are measured as precisely as possible. What are the best instruments to use? You see the length of the wire is 50 centimeter. So you can use a rule, meter rule. Meter rule is 100 centimeter long. So for five, 50 centimeter long wire, we can use a meter rule. For length, use a rule. And the diameter of wires is always measured with the micrometer. So for question number two, A is the option. Question number three is on your screen. A cyclist takes a ride lasting 25 seconds. The diagram shows how her distance traveling from the starting position varies with time. So it's a distance time graph. You can see on the y-axis, the distance is represented. On the x-axis, time is represented. The total distance covered is 150 meter and the total time taken to cover that distance is 25 seconds. <clears throat> What is her average speed for the whole ride? The formula for the average speed is total distance traveled divided by total time taken. So the total uh, distance traveled is 150 meter divided by total time taken, that is 25, 150 divided by 25, and the answer will be six. So the average speed for the whole ride is six meter per second. So A is the choice. Question number three, A is the choice. Question number four is on your screen. A car begins to move its speeds up until it reaches a constant speed. It continues to travel at this constant speed for the rest of the journey. What happens to the acceleration and what happens to the velocity of the car? You know, the car speed up, then the speed became constant. So the velocity has changed. And before the, it was speeding up, so it was accelerating. And then the acceleration became zero when it started moving with a constant speed. So it means the velocity is changing and its acceleration is also changing. So it means both the acceleration and the velocity are velocity change. So for question number four, A is the option. <clears throat> okay, question number five is on your screen. A metal ball of mass 0 0.30 kg and weight three Newton is held so that it is below the surface of oil. It experiences an upward force of 0 0.30 Newton. And what, when the ball is released, what is its initial acceleration? You know, to calculate the uh, acceleration, I can use the Newton's uh, second law of motion. And its mathematical form is F equal MA. F is the resultant force. So I need to calculate, first of all, the resultant force. The upward force is 0 0.30 Newton and the downward force is 3 Newton. So the resultant force will be 3 Newton minus 0 0.30 Newton. So first of all, calculate what is the, uh, what is the resultant force. And then I will apply the formula F is equals to MA. The resultant force will be 2.7 Newton. And F is equals to MA, 2.7 equal to 0 0.3 into a and a will be 2.7 divided by 0 0.3 and the answer will be 9 meter per second square i have done this on a paper let me show you my work also so i okay so on your screen you can see question number five resultant force first of all we calculated the resultant force which came out to be 2.7 Newton. Then we applied the second law of motion, F is equals to MA. And from there, we calculated the value of the A and the answer is nine meter per second square. 
So for question number, question number, uh, question number five, B is the choice. For question number five, B is the choice. So B is the choice, nine meter per second square. Nine meter per second square is the answer, B is the choice. I hope that you have understood the procedure, how we came to this answer. Next question, question number six is on your screen. He says, uh, a student drops from rest a ta table tennis ball in air. What happens to the velocity and to the acceleration of the ball during the first few seconds after the release? When you drop a table tennis ball, the table tennis ball starts falling. Its acceleration, uh, sorry, its velocity starts increasing. So velocity will be increasing. Now, when you drop it at that moment, the vertical downward velocity is zero. That's why there is no air resistance. But as the body starts gaining the velocity in the downward di direction, the air resistance starts increasing. So air resistance when it increases, the resultant force, which is weight minus the air resistance, that also starts decreasing. So the acceleration at the start will be larger, but as the air resistance will increase, the resultant force will decrease. So the acceleration will decrease. So in this case, it means that the velocity of the body is increasing, but the acceleration at the very, very first moment is larger, but then it gradually decreases. So acceleration is decreasing and the velocity is increasing. So for question number six, C looks the choice in uh, velocity increases and the acceleration decreases. So C is the choice. Okay, next question. The Earth travels in a circular orbit around the sun at constant speed. So this is the circular orbit. This is the sun. Here they have shown three arrows. Which arrow shows the direction of the acceleration of the Earth and the direction of the velocity of the Earth? You know, the velocity is in the tangential direction. So the velocity will be Q and the acceleration is towards the center of the circle. So the acceleration will be towards R. You see, the let me reduce the size a little bit so you can see the whole thing okay you see the direction of the acceleration will be r and the direction of the velocity will be q so for question number seven d looks the answer d is the right answer for question number seven Okay, the next question on your screen is question number eight. The mass of a stone is found on Earth using a pan balance. The weight of the stone is found using a Newton meter. Are the readings the same or different on the moon? You know, when you will measure the mass with the help of the pan balance, whether you measure it on the Earth or on the moon, the mass will remain same. So the reading on the pan balance will be the same. Newton meter is used to measure the weight. So if you measure the weight of a stone on the earth, it will be different. And when you will measure the same stones uh, with the, its weight with the help of a Newton meter on the moon, the weight will be different. Because on the earth and on the moon, the gravitational field strength on the, both the places or on both the uh, locations is different. So the reading on the Newton meter will be different and the reading on the pan balance will be the same. So it looks B is the choice. Question number eight, B is the choice. <clears throat> okay. So the next question is question number nine on your screen. The uniform beam is pivoted at its center. Two weights are placed on the beam in the positions shown and the beam is balanced by an upward force F. What is the size of the F? So one, the first thing on this kind of question, you need to understand that which force is producing clockwise moments and which force is producing anti-clockwise moments. This 30 Newton force, it is trying to produce an anti-clockwise moment. This F force is also trying to produce an anti-clockwise moment. And this 60 Newton force is trying to produce a clockwise moment about this pivot. And because we know that the whole thing is in equilibrium, so the sum of the anti-clockwise moments is equal to the sum of clockwise moments. The anti-clockwise moment is F multiply 50 plus 30 multiply 40 equals to 
60 multiply 30. I have done this on a paper. Let me show you my work also. Okay. Question number nine is on your screen. Clockwise moment is equal to anti-clockwise moment. Clockwise moment was 60 multiplied 30. 30 is the perpendicular distance between the line of action of the force and the pivot equals to F into 50 plus 30 into 40. So 1800 equals to 50 F plus 1200. So that 1200 will go on the other side. It will subtract from 1800 and the answer will be 600. So F will be 600 divided by 50. And the final final answer will be 12. So for question number nine, 12 Newton is the answer. B is the choice. B, 12 Newton is the choice. I hope you have understood it. Question number 10 is on your on your screen. The diagrams shows leak, show liquids in containers. Which column of liquid exerts the greatest pressure on the base of its container? You see here, four containers are given. They have different liquids in them. Every liquid has different density. Every diff liquid has different depth. The formula for the pressure of the liquid is rho GH. Density multiply gravitational field strength multiply the depth of the liquid. So that liquid will have the greatest pressure whose density is greatest and whose depth is greatest. In the given options, the water has the greatest depth and the greatest density in B choice. So the, the liquid which is given in the B will have the greatest pressure because it has the greatest density and it has the greatest um depth of the liquid so this vessel will have the greatest pressure at the bottom of the vessel uh, due to the water so b is the choice question number 11 is on your screen the graph shows how the pressure of a fixed mass of gas varies with volume at constant temperature so here the pressure is given in kilo, kilopascal and the volume is given in centimeter cube. What is the volume of the gas when the pressure is 25 kilopascal? When the, uh, you know, you remember that formula P1 V1 equals to P2 V2? P1 V1 equals to P2 V2. We can choose a P1 from here. For example, if I choose this, when the volume is 20, the pressure is 50 kilopascal. So when the pressure is 25 kilopascal, what will be the volume? There's a simple numerical of P1, V1 equals to P2, V2. V2 is the question. I have done this on a paper. Uh, so you see, uh, question number 11 is on your screen. P1, V1 equals to P2, V2, 50 into 20. This point I took from the graph and 25 into v v will be equal to 1000 divided by 25 and the answer will be 40 centimeter cube Forty centimeter cube is answer so d is the choice for question number 11 d is the choice i hope you have understood it Okay, my dear students, question number 12 is on your screen. A rocket of total mass, capital M, is traveling at the speed of V. The engine of the rocket is fired and fuel is used up. The mass of the rocket decreases to M by 2 and its speed increases to 2V. What happens to the kinetic energy of the rocket? Remember one thing, the kinetic energy depends upon the mass. It is directly proportional to the mass and it also depends upon the speed. It is directly proportional to the square of the speed. So it's directly proportional to the square of the mass and it is also directly proportional to the square of the speed. So if the mass will become half, the kinetic energy will become half, but if the speed will become double, the kinetic energy will become four times. So multiply one by two with four and the answer will be two. So the kinetic energy will become double. So do you know, I, I, I reached the answer 
uh, without going into the proper calculation, but we can do this whole thing by proper calculation also. I've done this on a paper. Let me show you my paper. You see, in the first situation, when the m was m, when the mass was m and the velocity was v, the kinetic energy number one is one by two m square. And then there was a second situation in which he says that the mass of the rocket is m by two and the velocity is double the velocity in the first situation. So the kinetic energy will be one by two the mass into the velocity square. So one by two the big because the mass is m by two and the velocity because the velocity is two v. So I put there two v. And when I take the square of the 2v, it becomes v square and 2 square will be 4. So the formula become 1 by 2 mv square into 4 divided by 2. So 2 and 4 will be cancelled. So that 2, I took it to the side. And 1 by 2 mv square, 1 by 2 mv square was the kinetic energy number 1. So it means the kinetic energy number 2 is equal to 2 times the kinetic energy 1. It means that the, when the mass of the rocket will become half, and its velocity will become double, the kinetic energy of the rocket will also become double. I hope you have understood it's a little tricky question. So question number 12, double, it doubles. Kinetic energy will double, the A is the choice. Question number 12, A is the choice. Okay, question number 13 is on your screen. A builder lifts eight slabs from the ground onto the back of a lorry 1.5 meter high. The total time taken is 48 seconds and each slab weighs 200 Newton. How much useful power does the builder produce? If you want to find out the power, the formula is power equals to work divided by time. Work is equals to weight multiply the vertical height divided by time. The weight of the one slab is 800, uh, sorry, 200, and there are eight slabs, so eight multiply 200, multiply 1.5, so you will get the work done and divide it with 48 seconds, and you will get the power. I have done this on a paper. Let me show you my work here. On your screen, question number 13, your solution is showing. The power is equal to work divided by time. The work is weight into height divided by time. So eight slabs, each slab 200 Newton and the vertical height gained by them is 1.5 Newton and the time taken is 48 seconds. So I did the calculation and the answer is 50 Watt. 50 Watt is the answer. Question number 13, A is the choice. 50, 50 Watt, A is the choice. Question number 13, A is the choice. The next question on your screen, question number 14, a soldier, a solid bar is heated at one end. How is thermal energy transferred to the other end of the bar? In the solids, heat is transferred by the process of the conduction and the conduction takes place by the vibration of the particle. So what happens, the molecules which are at the hotter end, they start vibrating vigorously, the amplitude of their vibration increasing. So they make their neighboring molecules vibrate vigorously. So through the vibrations, the energy is transferred from one particle to the next, from the next to the next. So the D looks the right answer, sir. D, heated molecules vibrate more rapidly and pass energy to other molecules. So D is the right option for question number 14. D, D is the right option. Okay. Question number 15 is on your screen. An electric heater is placed in a beaker of cold oil as shown. The heater is switched on. What happens to the liquid at X? You see the liquid here when this heater will be on, this liquid here, its molecules will gain uh, heat energy and they will move away from each other. When they will move away from each other, their density will decrease and they will start rising upward. In this way, the convection currents are set in in the liquid. So what will happen with the liquid attacks? It will become less dense and it will rise. B looks the right answer for question number 15. B is the right option. B is the right option, sir. Question number 16 is on your screen. 
the tubes inside solar heating panels use the sun's radiation to warm water. Why are the tubes painted black? Because black color is a very good absorber of infrared radiation. So that's why it will absorb more thermal energy from the light. So A looks the right answer. Black surfaces absorb radiation well. Question number 16A is the right answer, sir. Famous question, question number 17 is on your screen. It's a numerical about the length of the thread of the mercury and the temperature. In a liquid in glass thermometer, the liquid column is two centimeters long at zero degree centigrade and it expands 10 centimeters when heated to 100 degree centigrade. Measuring from the P, how long is the liquid column at 30 degree centigrade? The famous formula, which you should always remember, L theta minus L naught divided by L hundred minus L naught equals to theta minus uh, zero and divided by hundred minus zero. <clears throat> I've done this on a paper. Let me show you my work. So on your screen, <clears throat> You can see L theta equals to 2 centimeter, L100 is equal to 12 centimeter, and L30 is question. What will be the length of the thread when the temperature is 30? L30 minus L0 divided by L100 minus L0 is equal to 30 minus 0 divided by 100 minus 0. L30 is question. I suppose it has X minus L0 is 2 divided by L100 is 12 minus L0 is 2 equals to 30 by 100. So X minus 2 divided by 10 equals to 3 by 10 and cross multiply and uh, then I took the minus 2 to the other side and added it. So the x will be equals to 5. So the length of the thread of the mercury when the temperature is 30 will be 5 centimeter. So 5 centimeter. So C is the choice. C is the right choice, sir. C is the right choice. I hope you have understood it. it's a very important numerical. Question number uh, 18 is on your screen. Which substance in the table is liquid at 20 degrees centigrade? So if the 20 is between its melting and the boiling point, it's between its melting and the boiling point, then the thing will be liquid is at 20 degrees centigrade. So minus 218 is the melting point and the boiling point is minus 183 so that at 20 degrees centigrade this thing will be in the gaseous form. B, the melting point is minus 39 and the boiling point is 357. So at 20 degrees centigrade this thing will be liquid. So B is the choice sir. 18B is the choice. A little bit, just you have to use a little bit of your brain and that's it. B is the choice. Okay, uh, question number 19 is on your screen. Which diagram represents the change in the arrangement of the molecules in a solid as the substance melts? So if the solid is melting, the, there will be regular arrangement and then they will be converted into an irregular arrangement, but they will be in the form of clusters. So A looks the right option, sir. Question number 19, A looks the right option where a solid is melting into a liquid. A is the right option. The rest of the things are wrong. Okay, sir. Question number. Question number 20 is on your screen. Some gas is trapped in a closed container. The gas is cooled and the volume of the container is kept constant. What happens to the gas molecule? So, see, <clears throat> the volume is kept constant and the temperature is dropped. Remember this word, that volume is kept constant. So intermolecular spacing will not decrease. But the gas is cooled, the temperature has dropped. The average kinetic energy of the gas molecules will become less. But when the average kinetic energy of the molecules will become less, what will happen? They will start moving slowly. So D looks the choice, they move more slowly. Yes, question number 20, D is the choice. They move more slowly. 
the rash of the things are wrong. Question number 21 is on your screen. In a liquid, some energetic molecules break free from the surface even when the liquid is too cold for bubbles to form. What is the name of this process? This is a famous process. We call it evaporation. So D is the choice. Question number 21, D is the choice. This is a description of the evaporation. Okay, next question number 22 is on your screen. A pupil adds 37 gram of ice at zero degrees centigrade to 100 gram of water at 30 degrees centigrade. The final temperature of the water and the melted ice is zero degrees centigrade. No heat is lost to or gained from the surroundings. The specific heat capacity of the water is 4.2 joules per gram per degree centigrade. What is the specific latent heat of ice? You see, there are two things. One, we have the ice cubes, 37 gram of the ice cubes. The ice cubes are at zero degree centigrade, but they are in solid form. And then I have 100 gram of water, which is in liquid form, and that water is at 30 degree centigrade. So two different things, ice cubes at zero degree centigrade, and water, 100 gram water at 30 degrees centigrade. And I mix them together. No heat lost to the surrounding, no heat gained from the surrounding. So what happened? The ice melted and the temperature of the whole thing became zero degree centigrade. You see here in this system, the heat has been lost and heat has been gained. The heat has been gained by the ice cubes to melt. And the heat has been lost by that 100 gram water, which was at 30 degrees centigrade, and its final temperature became zero degrees centigrade. And you know, in the sister closed system, the heat gained and heat lost, they are equal. The heat gained was used to melt the ice. So the heat which is used to melt the ice can be found by M into L, where M is the mass of the ice cubes and L is the latent heat of the ice cubes. And that is the question. So heat gained is M multiply L equals to, in the water, 100 gram water at 30 degrees centigrade, temperature change from 30 to zero degrees centigrade. So it, so it lost the energy. It has lost the heat energy. So what will happen that the heat gained is equal to heat loss. So heat loss will be, because here the temperature change is involved, we will use the formula MC delta theta where M is 100 gram, the C is 4.2 joules per gram per degree centigrade, and the change in temperature is from 30 to zero. From 30 to zero, the temperature change is 30. I've done this on a paper. Let me show you my working. I hope you can see it clearly. Heat gained is equals to heat lost. Heat gained is uh, when uh, the heat gained is by the ice cubes and they melted themselves. They were already at zero degree centigrade. So the, all the heat you provided is used to melt the ice. Heat gained is M multiply L. And the heat loss was 100 gram water, which temperature changed from 30 to zero. So heat loss is M C delta theta. M ice cubes mass 37 into L, the lat specific latent heat is equals to M 100 gram into 4.2 into 30 and the L value will be 341 joules per gram. 341 joules per gram. For question number 22, 341 joules per gram. 341 joules per gram. So B is the right option, sir. B looks the right option. Question number 22, B is the right option. It's a little tricky question. I hope that uh, I have made the points clear to you. Okay, dear, question number 23 is on your screen. The heat capacity of an object of mass 2 kg is C. The energy needed to... So what is... Uh, heat capacity of an object of mass 2 kg is C. The energy needed to increase the temperature of the whole object by delta T is C multiplied delta T. Yeah, that is the right answer. This is not the specific heat capacity given. It is the heat capacity given. So we don't need the mass here. So C into delta theta, delta T, sorry. A is the choice. Question number 23A is the right choice. The rest of the things are wrong. 
question number 24 my dear is on your student a ball floating in a ripple tank begins to move vertically up and down as a wave passes beneath it the ball does not move horizontally the ball is moving up and down which statement is correct both energy and water are transferred in the wave direction no water do not transfer only energy is transferred energy is not transferred in the wave direction but water is no energy is transferred in the wave direction but water is not yes that is right neither energy nor water is transferred in the wave direction that's wrong so c is the right statement for question number 24 c is the right statement that energy is transferred in the wave direction but water is not you know the wave motion in the wave motion what happens the energy transfers from one point to another point but the medium through which the wave is uh, is, uh, is 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 propagating the there is no net movement of that medium so the water which is the medium there will be zero net movement of the water only the energy will transfer from the one point the uh, one point to the other point the particle of the water they will only vibrate and they will vibrate about their mean position net movement will be zero so c is the choice Okay, sir. Question number 25 is on your screen. A ray of light in glass is incident on the surface at an angle C. The angle C is the critical angle, which diagram shows what happens to the light. So when the angle of incidence in the dense medium will be equal to the critical angle, the angle of refraction will be of 90 degree and the light will not emerge in the rare medium but it will travel on the boundary of the air and the glass. So here in the D choice, you can see the angle of refraction is of 90 degree. The angle of refraction here is of 90 degree and the light is traveling on the boundary of the air and the glass. So it means that this is the critical angle. So D is the right choice, sir. D is the right choice for question number 25. Okay, on your screen we have question number 26. A ray of light is incident on the surface of a glass block as shown in the diagram below. The refractive index of the glass is 1.5. The light ray changes direction when entering the glass. What is the angle x through which the ray moves? Okay, so you know, this is the angle of incidence. Because the normal makes 90 degree angle with the surface of the glass. If this is 45, this will be also 45. So the angle of incidence is 45. Not this 45, but this 45. The angle between the normal and the incident ray. This is 45. This will be, this portion, this will be the angle of refraction. This portion here will be the angle of refraction. And this whole angle will be 45. This whole angle will be 45 because of they are vertically opposite angles. So this R plus X will be equals to 45. So let me first of all, by using the Snell's law, let me find out what is the value of the R. Snell law. Snell's law says N is equals to sin I divided by sin R. The value of the N is given. The value of I is given. R value we can calculate. I have done this on a paper. Let me show you my work. Okay, sir. Question number 26 is on the screen. So N is equals to sine I by sine R. N value refractive index is 1.5 equals to sine 45 divided by sine R. So sine R is equals to sine 45 divided by 1.5 and sine 45 divided by 1.5 that will give you an answer of 0 0.47. So if I make the R alone, so it will be sine inverse of 0 0.47 and the answer will be 28.1. So R value is 28.1 and on the diagram I told you that R plus X is equal to 45. So if R is 28, what will be the value of the X? That will be 45 minus 28 and the answer will be 17. The answer will be 17. So for question number 26, the answer is 17, which is the C choice. Question number 26, C is the choice. Okay, sir, on your screen, question, question number 27. An image is formed by a thin converging lens when it is used as a magnifying glass. 
what is the correct description of the image when you use a magnifying glass the image formed is virtual the image formed is magnified it's very large and the image formed is upright we also called it erect the image formed will be magnified image form will be erect image form will be virtual or upright so what is the description of the image formed by a magnifying glass c looks the right answer question number 27 c looks the right answer virtual and correct erect virtual and erect question number 27 c is the choice question number 28 is on your screen which component of the electromagnetic spectrum is used for television transmission from satellites the television transmission from the satellites is done by the microwaves it's a fact a is the choice question number 28 microwaves a is the choice question number 29 is on your screen in which situation do sound waves not travel sound waves can not travel in a vacuum for example the satellites and the earth between them we have space so the sound cannot travel from the satellite directly to the earth or it cannot travel from the sun to the earth because there is vacuum so from a satellite in space to the earth yes it cannot travel the reason is there is vacuum between the satellite and the earth so for question number 29a is the right option sir question number 29a is the right option this one a is the right option question number 30 is on your screen two sound waves x and y are compared x has the greater frequency y has the greater amplitude if the great if x has greater frequency it will have higher pitch it will have higher pitch x will have higher pitch but y has greater amplitude if its amplitude is greater the y will be louder so why is louder and high pitch that's wrong high pitch was x why is louder and low pitch yes this is the choice b is the right wording sir why is louder and lower pitch so b is the choice question number 30 b is the right choice question number 31 is on your screen a metal ring screen a piece of equipment from a magnetic field you know for this magnetic screening the metal the ring should be made of the iron and the reason is that the iron will not let the magnetic field lines come reach the equipment they will travel through the ring and they will exit from the other side so question number 31 c looks the right on option iron and the reason is the metal carries the field lines around the equipment so c is the choice question number 31 okay question number 32 is on your screen let's reduce the size a little bit yeah a positively charged rod is brought near to an isolated uncharged conducting sphere so here we have a metal sphere it's on an insulator i have brought a positive charge so this and the electrons here from all over the sphere the free electrons will be attracted they will accumulate here so this x will become negative and the y will become positive so what are the charges on the x and y of the sphere so x is negative and y is positive so d looks the right option question number 32 d looks the right option uh, on the x we will have negative and on the y we will have positive so d is the right option x is negatively charged and y is positively charged i hope you have understood question number 32 okay the question number uh 30 question number 33 the diagram shows a circuit wire must an ammeter be connected to measure the smallest current question is in which branch is the smallest current so current coming out of the battery the same current is flowing through the 30 ohm and going back to the battery so at point d and a the current will be same here we have two branches if i connect the ammeter on b position or if i connect the ammeter on the c here the current is divided in two branches in this branch you know the resistance is low 10 ohm as compared to the other so here the amount of current will be larger so ammeter will show a larger reading but in this branch you know this 20 ohm resistor the resistance is higher so the current flowing through this branch will be less 
So if I put an ammeter on the position C, it will have the smallest current. So C is the answer, sir. Question number 33, C is the right option. Okay. The next question on your screen is two resistors of resistors is 30 ohm and 60 ohm are arranged in parallel. The current in the 30 ohm resistor is 0 0.60 amp. What is the potential difference across the 60 ohm resistor? You see, very simple. Here, these two resistors are in parallel to each other. So what is the voltage drop here? Same will be the voltage drop here. So here, you know, the resistance is given, the current is given. So I can calculate the voltage drop here according to Ohm's law, V equals to IR. The I is given, R is given, 0 0.60 multiply 30, 30 Ohm. And the answer will be, okay, 18 volt. So if the 18 voltage drop is on this branch, this branch because 60 ohm is also parallel to this branch. So when the resistors are connected in parallel, the we have, they have the same voltage drop. So if, if here you have 18 voltage drop here again on 60 ohm resistor, the voltage drop will be 18. So B is the choice. I have done this on a paper. Let me show you that. Here, question number 34 is on screen. V1 is equal to IR 30 into 0 0.6, 18 ohm. And because the both branches are parallel to each other, so they will have the same voltage drop. So V2 is equal to V1 and equals to 18 volt. 34 question, 18 volt is the right option, sir. B is the right option. Question number 34, B is the right option. Question number 34, B is the right option. Okay, the circuit shows three resistors in series connected to a battery. Each resistor has a voltmeter across it and two of the voltages are shown. So from battery, you have given 40 volt EMF of the battery is 40, 40 volt. And here the first voltage drop is 10 and here the second voltage drop is 18 volt. And we know that the sum of these three readings should be equal to 40, equals to the EMF of the battery. So 10 plus B plus 18 equals to 40. And we can get the answer. So it will be 40 minus 28 and the 12 will be the answer. Okay. 12 will be the answer. A choice. Question number 35. A is the right choice. I hope that you have understood it. Okay. So here we go. We have a question here. Okay. He says that uh, a teacher moves a magnet to into and out of a coil of wire as shown in order to demonstrate electromagnetic induction. Which statement is correct? As you move, when this north pole will be approaching this coil, this will become north to stop this motion. And when this magnet will be moving away, this north will be going away from this left end of the coil. To stop this motion, this will become south. So as, as the magnet is moved into the coil, the left end of the coil becomes south pole. That's wrong. As the magnet is taken out of the coil, the left end of the coil becomes north pole. That's wrong. Increasing the speed at which the magnet in, enters the coil increases the induced voltage. Yeah, that's true. Increasing the speed at which the magnet leaves the coil decreases the induced voltage. That's wrong. So C looks the right wording. Only the C is the right words. For question number 36, C looks the right answer, sir. Yeah, C is the right answer. Okay, on your screen we have question number 37. A transformer consists of two coils which are wound on uh, onto a metallic core. What type, which type of metal voltage is applied to the transformer and which metal is used to make the core? To make the core, we use iron and the uh, transformer works on the alternating voltage supply. Alternating and metal, A is the choice. 37, A is the choice. Question number 37, A is the choice. The next question is 38, a nucleus of uh, PO84215 by emitting polonium, I think, by emitting an alpha particle and the resultant nucleus then decays. 
by emitting a beta beta particle what is the nucleon number and proton number of the final nucleus you see first you have to give uh, the parent nucleus an alpha decay and then we have to give it a beta decay when the alpha decay happens the proton number decreases by 2 and the mass number decreases by 4 the proton number decreases by uh, 2 and the mass number or nucleon number decreases by 4 and when the beta particle uh, decay happens the proton number increases by 1 but the mass remains the same okay i have done this on a paper let me show you that also you see on your screen i have uh, i have taken the polonium 8425 first of all an alpha particle is given out so the daughter nucleus x it will its proton number will be 82 and its mass number will be 211 you see the proton number has been decreased by 2 and the mass number has been decreased by 4 then what happens another beta particle is given out so this x converted into y when beta is given out the daughter nucleus the new daughter nucleus will have one more proton number but its mass number will remain the same so 83 and 21 so the nucleon number is 211 and the proton number is 83 very important question i hope that you can understand this okay question number 39 <clears throat> a radioactive metal decays by this process you see here the mass number of the daughter nucleus has is unchanged and this proton number is increased by one this means that the x is a beta particle this happens only when beta emissions take place so beta is electron and electron so what is the particle x electron 39 a is the choice question number 39 a is the choice for question number 38 b was the choice i hope 39 is the choice okay question number 40 is on your screen the half life of a radioactive isotope is 24 hours a sample of this isotope produces an initial count rate of 720 counts per second. How long does it take for the count rate to fall to 90? From 720, how long it will take to fall to 90? I've done this on a paper. Let me show you. Okay. At zero hour, it was 720. Then the 720 will have, it will become 360. The 360 will have, it will become 180. And 180 will have, and it will become 90. This first half life took 24 hours. The next one also took 24 hours. And the next one also took 24 hours. So total 72 hours. So 72 hours is the answer. B is the choice. For question number 40, B is the right choice. So that's it, G. This was... Okay, today we have done May, June 2015, one-two paper. It was a MCQ paper, and the course we are studying is Physics 5054. My name is Farhan Mazar. Thank you very much, everybody, and uh, God bless you all. Thank you very much, and have